other New Mexico school districts play by different rules. Tonight, investigative reporter Jeremy Hohola looks into a district that still allows corporal punishment, including spanking, and one case where a parent says the paddler went overboard to the point where state police are now involved. He's a 14-year-old boy whose mother admits has problems paying attention in class. But his mother, who we will call Brandy, says her 90-pound son didn't deserve what she calls excessive spanking at school, resulting in a bruised behind last fall. He was paddled at San Juan School near Tucumcari. I think it just caused more um, damage to him than it did improving his behavior. Brandy was out of town that day, but was sent photos of her son's purple behind by his grandmother. Now these photos are part of a state police report. And when I got the pictures, I was devastated. What went through your mind when you saw those pictures? I was sick. I was hurt that it could be taken this far. So I was very, very upset. She claims her family was told the female principal would swat her son when they gave permission. Instead, the report says it was the coach who swatted the boy three times while allegedly telling the student if he was tough enough to talk back to teachers, then he was tough enough to take the swats. Because of the bruising and because her son cried after the first swat, the investigating officer concluded in his report the paddling could have been excessive, but also noted it did not affect his mobility and that permission for the swatting was granted by the boy's family. The investigator also noted names of students on the paddle saying it was his impression the school takes pride in spanking. Brandy says the paddling did more damage than just bruising. I think his self-confidence is like zero. Um, he's stressed a lot. He really doesn't want to go to school. We asked the San Juan superintendent about the case. It's a confidential information. Well, Gary Salazar says he cannot comment by law on any student's punishment, he did talk about the district's paddling policy in general, saying corporal punishment is rarely used and only as a last resort that is usually requested by parents. From your perspective, do you think it works? You know, uh, having been in education for, you know, almost 20 years, it's, it's one of those things I think over time it, it has perhaps lost some of its effectiveness, but it does work for some kids. And it is, a, it is an option. Our state is one of 20 across the country where school corporal punishment is still legal, including spanking. Out of New Mexico's 89 school districts, we found 36 districts that still allow corporal punishment, like in San Juan. The law leaves it up to local school boards to decide if it should be used. And a lot of times it's a reflection of the community itself. Uh, the board members, of course, represent the community, and I'm sure if they felt like the, uh, the policy was something that uh, the community did not want, then we would probably make that adjustment. In one school year, we found 705 students in New Mexico were swatted, according to the U.S. Department of Education. We are teaching children that you solve problems through violence. Ohio is the latest state to ban it after Nadine Block of the Center for Effective Discipline pushed for the ban. She told us over a satellite interview it should be banned in New Mexico too because corporal punishment is already banned in the military, foster care, and in private child care. Block also says it opens up schools for lawsuits. One of the primary problems is that children are injured. That was Jeremy Hohola reporting. Brandy has put her son in another school and has been told by the district attorney's office it likely will not move forward with the case. So now Brandy says she may sue. For a list of districts we found that still use corporal punishment, log on to KOB.com.